Why do you think liberals and NDP attack conservative on US style politics? And do you think it's hypocritical since Hillary Clinton was a speaker at liberal convention and Bernie Sanders was shown support for NDP as well? Oh, of course it's hypocritical, but this is this is their favorite game. And this is this is one of the things I hate most about Canadian politics as I'll, I'll claim the, the, the mantle of I'll, I'll pull the patriotism card here. I hate when we just like we, we, we ignore Canadian issues and we just navel gaze and yell America, America, America and how we spend more time on Trump than our own issues. Like, grow up. Everyone grow up. Yes, America is is sexier and bigger and louder and, and has the things, but you can see sort of a through line of left-wing Canadian nationalism. And a lot of people push this. I think, you know, um, even Jay, Jay McCullough, uh, is, I think have made this point that there seems to be a defining anti-American um, sentiment among Canadian left-wing nationalists. In the sense that a lot of the Canadian left define themselves and their Canadian patriotism, Canadian patriotism through anti-Americanism. I don't like this, one, because I'm not anti-American, but two, I do not like defining Canadian nationalism off of another, like, I, I think if you want to love Canada, I think uh, you should find Canadian reasons and, and things Canada's done. I think there's a lot there. Um, but this sort of like, oh, we're not America, um, uh, America scare tactoring, like where this whole, like, we're so much more reasonable than America. I think, I don't think it's a good base to have um, a, a national ide or a, an identity or really anything on. Like, I, I don't, you, it, it's, it's bad character to um, have your identity consumed in opposition to someone else. Like, you're a man or a woman, stand on your own merits. So this is one of the favorite scare tactics of sort of the Canadian left is, it's one way to keep the conservatives being evil is they do American style politics, American style thing. It's it's like sort of a dig, it's sort of, um, you know, a softer version of trying to, to trump. It's like a, it's a, it's like a gateway drug. Right, it's like a little smoke of, uh, of, of I don't know, cigarette or marijuana in, in, in the class, class in terms of political attacks. It's just a little, you know, hit. It, it just, you know, sets you up, puts you in the mood. Right, right wing American style attacks. Everyone kind of knows you, you're doing drugs to to go to the to the harder things, which is like he is Donald Trump and and scary, right? Which is like the harder, big, scary attacks that they they like to throw. Yeah, I mean, I mean you're right. It's hypocritical. It's also um, dishonest because you know what's American style politics voting talking uh, you know being entertaining what what is this like you no know, again Pierre Polyev is popular and they're trying to conflate popular with populism and then they're you know gonna say look Pierre Polyev had a rally where lots of people showed up and were sharing the things he said no else did that Donald Trump do you really want Donald Trump to be here Right? Instead, if you want a prime minister who's universally booed and can't string a sentence together, this is who you want. You want a drama teacher who's unable to communicate with the public. That is what you want. You want someone whose background is purely in drama and the complete inability to communicate because that is the real value in a drama teacher. So, you know, this is just a favorite thing we do. We overfixate on America and we define ourselves. We import American cultural issues, like a lot of this critical race stuff, like a lot of the neo communist stuff I talked about in the previous segment is really a basing of like 1960s through 90s like american um racial issues uh and then imposing that on like literally every other um subcategory in the world like are you two different african tribes going against each other we're going to look at it through a 1960s uh, american racism lens of jim crow oh uh you know uh if uh, venezuela is about to communist venezuela is about to annex something we'll we'll we'll, we'll find out who's the black people and who's the, who's the white people in this framework and, and then we'll make a decision there israel palestine of course you know throw it into australia the rest of the anglosphere we get it earlier it leaks into europe you see george floyd gets killed in america the entire world goes up into a rage. Why? In the UK, after this, you had, and after the Michael Brown, you had people in the UK going, hands up, don't shoot, which was a lie, and debunked. But even after it was debunked, hands up, don't shoot in the UK. The UK police don't have guns. They don't have guns. They can't shoot you. They don't have guns. They probably should have guns. I would give them guns. That's a different conversation entirely. But again, you, you have the point where the, to walk around in a country where there are no guns because someone in another country got guns and go to the police and say, don't shoot me when they have no guns. You need to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to be this stupid. You have to have four years in the classroom going to different professors teaching you to be this stupid and you must commit to it. There's no working class kid who like, you know, their parents are working and they go up and then they like become a mechanic and have a success. Like none of them would ever be like, 
oh, the, someone shot in America, like the police, which I know because I probably know some of the who don't have, like, how do you get this stupid? The answer is Harvard University. Only Harvard University could make people this stupid, but they do. So I, 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 I come with problems, but no solutions.